Hi, I'm Brian Sullivan and welcome to another video tutorial on VSTV. Today we'll be looking at how to create a scratch voiceover track in Final Cut Pro. I have a simple script in hand and will record my voice using the built-in voiceover tool in Final Cut Pro. Let's get started. So here we go, we have a simple script, you know, just a couple of sentences. And I'm going to switch over to Final Cut Pro and under the tools menu, you'll see this item voiceover that will call up the voiceover panel. So for this, I want to name it. So I'll call it project name scratch VO 01. Now I'm using a mobile pre, uh, which is an M audio IO and, uh, basically I have an, a microphone connected through that. And then that is connected to my computer via USB. So, um, we're going to set the rate to 4,800 Hertz. Um, and everything else looks good. Now, next we want to, uh, lay down a couple of slugs on the timeline, which will allow us to select a range. So I'll go into effects, video generators, slug. So I'll stretch this slug out as far as it goes. Okay. And then I've copy and pasted a couple of them, um, to make sure I have enough room to record. Now I'll delete this, uh, audio from the slug. And then to set an endpoint, I go to the beginning of my timeline and press I on the keyboard. And then I'll go to the end of the timeline and I'll press O for out. So I've selected a range and now I'm ready to record the voiceover. Now this isn't going to be a very high quality recording because my MacBook fan is uh, revving up right now. It should be fine. I have my script and I'm going to click record. Creating a video from start to finish is a time intensive and often frustrating process, unless you have the proper tools and streamlined workflow to help you focus on the, to help you focus on the end product rather than the, rather than the individual technical details. An effective workflow helps to speed up certain repetitive tasks, keep projects organized and ensure that deadlines are met. Okay. So there we go. As you can see, I'm, I'm no pro, um, but we managed to get, uh, the recording here. So we'll expand our track and, um, we don't really need these slugs anymore. So I'll delete those and let's just zoom in and you'll notice there's this little arrow at the bottom of your timeline. If you click on that, you can select show audio waveforms. So I'll click that and we can see that, you know, the levels look like they're within range. It's a bit hot here, but we'll deal with that later. So if we're going to just play back the beginning. <laughs> Creating a video from start to finish is a time intensive and often frustrating process, unless you have the proper tools and streamlined workflow. Okay. So there we go. I'll just bump it up to track number one. And we'll zoom in even closer. So usually, um, I guess the first thing that you could do before you start cutting your audio and pacing it out would be just to, to listen to parts of it to ensure that you're, you know, at the proper levels, you might as well just set your levels now rather than having to worry about it later, just to get you in the general ballpark. So I'll, um, I'll just zoom out a slight bit here and I'll just play a few little bits. I'm looking for the higher peaks in the audio. Creating a video from start to finish is a time intensive and often frustrating process unless you have the proper tools and streamlined workflow to help you focus on the, to help you focus on the end product rather than the, so it's a bit hot. I can uh, click on this little icon here at the bottom. Um, it gives you kind of your audio levels line and you can basically add nodes to this green line here to affect the volume. 
Now, another trick is to select the clip, and if you hold down Control and use your plus or minus keys, you can bring the levels up or down. So, I guess I've brought it down by 2 dB. I, I access this view by just double clicking the clip, and I'll just play, play it again. Technical details. An effective workflow helps to speed up certain repetitive tasks, keep projects organized, and ensure that deadlines are met. Okay, so for now, we'll leave it kind of in that range. It's kind of floating around the minus 12 dB range. That can be uh, brought down later. I may also add a compressor at some point, so that would, you know, maybe clamp it down a bit more. But let's start by just cutting up the audio and pacing it out a tiny bit. So we'll zoom in, I'll press B on the keyboard, and uh, that brings up my blade tool, and I can trim it right at the beginning there. Delete out that first bit. Creating a video from start to finish is a time intensive and often frustrating process, unless you have the proper tools. Now you can kind of eyeball it. And I usually cut out all of the breaths and pauses and streamlined workflow to help you focus on the, to help you focus. So as you can see that there is a mistake, but I picked it up. So I'll just cut it here and cut it there. Drag my clip back and streamlined workflow to help you focus on the end product rather than the, rather than the individual. Another mistake. <laughs> Maybe you'll be better at doing the recording than, than I. To help you focus on the end product rather than the individual. So that's a bit too tight, so we'll leave a bit more space. Focus on the end product rather than the individual technical. Okay, I just noticed that I must have clipped off the, the end of product. End product rather than the individual technical details. Okay. details. An effective workflow helps. Now that's a bit too much of a pause, so I'll drag that clip back a bit. Called details. An effective workflow helps to speed up certain repetitive tasks, keep projects organized. Again, a bit too long of a pause. Certain repetitive tasks, keep projects organized, and ensure that deadlines are met. Okay, good. So usually, you know, um, you can just kind of break it down, you know, pace it out as you go. And um, now we'll, we'll do a second pass just to be picky. Um, again, this is a scratch VO, so this would probably not be necessary. But um, since we're here, we might as well show you a few other tips. Creating a video from start to finish. So as you can see, I came in a bit hot there at the beginning. What I'll do is I'll drag down the levels just for this opening bit. And to do so... You press the option key and then bring your mouse right over that little line there and see you get a little pen tool. So now I can click to create a node. Click again to create a node here right in this space, this pause. And I'm going to bring it down by two more dB. So now it's at negative four. Creating a video from start to finish is a time intensive and often frustrating process unless you have the proper tools and Again, it's just the way I speak, but um, it seems to be hot at the beginning of each line here. Unless you have the proper tools and streamlined workflow to help you focus on the end product rather than the individual tech. Yeah, see that that's way too loud there again. And when you're creating these nodes or adjusting volume uh, within an audio clip, you want to be cautious about where you place your, uh, your nodes. You don't want to have uh, these right in the middle of a word because you can you'll definitely hear the volume change it's on the end product rather than the individual it's still a bit loud so here if i just drag my mouse over this area you'll see i can just drag it down a bit further to minus six product rather than the individual technical details an effective workflow helps to speed up certain repetitive tasks keep projects and actually as you can see, this spike right here, when it's in the middle of a sentence, I find a quick fix is to create 
one node before and after that audio spike, and you can just drag down the middle. So see, you're, you're just counteracting the same pattern that, that the audio is displaying. An effective workflow helps to speed up certain repetitive tasks, keep projects organized. See, projects is a bit loud. And actually, if we get in really close here, this is a common thing um, that you'll see. See this kind of squiggly, strange line here? That's borderline popping uh, on the microphone. I don't have a pop guard, um, so that is can be a problem. So in this case, I'll create a little dip here. And then since I wanted to bring down this level, see I'm just kind of following the curve here. And I find the highest point, and I'm just going to bring it down slightly. Keep projects or keep projects organized and ensure that deadlines are met. Okay, so there we go. In the previous tutorial, or one of the previous tutorials, we had created some folders within the Capture Scratch folder. We want to put this new recording in the appropriate folder before we get uh, too far ahead. So you'll notice. Here, under project name master01, see that's the name of my project, a new folder has been created. And within this folder, you'll see project name scratchvo01. Um, so usually at this point, I'll, I'll take this file and drag it from there into my scratchvo folder. Just so everything stays organized. Now, when I jump back to Final Cut, See, the media has gone offline. Now this is normal and we're dealing with just with one clip. So it's okay to correct this, this problem now. Um, so what I'll do is I'll select that entire track, right click and select reconnect media here near the bottom. I can just click on search. And there we go. See, it's found it under Scratch VO. We'll select it and choose. Connect. Another thing I like to do is to take these files <clears throat> and drag them into my Scratch VO folder. See, so, so what it's done here is every time I've made a cut point, it's created a new clip here. So you'll see all of the durations are different but it's all referencing the same single media file. Anyway, I, I prefer to do that just so it exists in the project browser. So there we go. We'll save that again. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So again, some very basic stuff here, but these techniques will help you get a decent sounding scratch recording, which will act as a foundation for your edit. If you have any tips and tricks or comments you'd like to share, please feel free to post them on the website. And don't forget to check out the blog for more production, post-production, and motion graphics tutorials at briansullivan.tv. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.